there is one group of dividend stocks that rules them all. In fact, to discuss this group is to talk of dividend royalty and can be your best shot at a bulletproof portfolio. Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here with a dividend portfolio that pays you a 4.9% yield, nearly four times the market average, and between the seven stocks has more than four centuries of dividend increases. I'm talking about the Dividend Kings, a group of stocks with decades of dividend increases. While some stocks hope to make the dividend aristocrats list of 25 plus years of increases, that would make them mere jesters in the court of the kings. I'll show you why the Dividend Kings are your best stocks for a bulletproof portfolio, explain why they beat the dividend aristocrats hands down, and then reveal a seven stock cash flow portfolio you will never have to worry about. But let's get started with one of the safest stocks in the market, Coca-Cola, ticker KO, with its 3.2% dividend. And you know the brand here. It's one of the world's 10 most valuable brands and the leading soft drink with over 100 billion cases sold since 2017. But the company is also leading in juices where it expects 3 to 5% growth, water for 5 to 6% growth, and its strategic areas like coffee and energy drinks. Coca-Cola has increased its dividend for 61 straight years, boosting the payout by 4.3% annually since 2020, along with a $1.7 billion share buyback program last year. Now, like most of these stocks, the industry isn't booming with growth anymore, but management believes it can turn that 4 to 6% annual revenue growth into 7 to 9% earnings growth through profitability gains and leverage. That's been good enough to help the stock add another 5.3% annual return on top of the dividend over the last five years for a total return just under 9% that's likely going to continue. Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway holds nearly 10% of the Coca-Cola company, a $24 billion bet on the stock. And we're just getting started, but I want to introduce you to these dividend royalty companies, explain the pros and cons of this type of strategy, and how the dividend kings are different from the dividend aristocrats. Now, the dividend kings are any company that has not only paid a dividend, but has increased it for more than 50 consecutive years. It's at once an extremely tough requirement, but also one that lets in more dividend stocks than other lists. Of course, the upside to this is the confidence that you're going to continue to see those dividends grow. It is not easy making the dividend kings list, and a company is going to fight to stay on it, even if it means borrowing to pay the dividend during times of weakness. That means when the market gives you lemons and stocks fall, dividends may be your only way of making lemonade. You can see here the total market returns by a decade with the percentage of return from dividends in blue. And sometimes dividends was about all the return you could count on. With the stock crash in 2000 and stock prices that didn't get back to their highs throughout the entire decade, dividends were the only positive return. Now, the downside to that royal status and dividend growth is these companies tend to focus on that dividend payment at the expense of stock price. Part of it is just a function of the industries these companies are in though. If tech stocks like Nvidia are the new kids on the block, blasting the doors off the market, then the dividend kings are closer to Methuselah driving a horse cart. So yeah, many of these are 100 year old plus companies that dominate their industry, but that industry just isn't growing more than 2 or 3% a year. It means the dividend kings probably won't make you rich overnight, but they will make you a stress-free portfolio that pays the bills. Now, before we get back to that list, I highlighted the dividend aristocrats challenge last week, growing a portfolio from $100 to $1,000 a month in dividends that I'll link to at the end of this video, but there are some differences here between the aristocrats and the kings. Those dividend aristocrats are those companies with a 25 plus years of increasing their dividend payments. So you're gonna see some overlap in these two lists like 3M and Altria Group. The big difference though is that the aristocrats, since it's a copyright of Standard & Poor's, is only those companies in the S&P 500 index. That means there are companies in the Dividend Kings list that are not in the aristocrats, like Canadian Utilities and ABM Industries. And so if we're talking about dividend security for a bulletproof portfolio, then I do prefer the Dividend Kings. For stock price return, you might go with the aristocrats since those are some newer companies in that list and you can always pick the best stocks from both lists though. Shares of Archer Daniels Midland, ticker ADM, have been under pressure lately, so if there's any stock in this list that I'd be looking to replace, it might be this one. The shares plunged in January after it was reported the Department of Justice had opened an investigation into some of its accounting practices. ADM did update investors in March, revealing that an internal audit had found some sales between the company's nutrition and other divisions hadn't been reported at market value, basically skewing the financial reports, uh, but, but that it was remediated and would not materially impact its earnings. And the company has accelerated its share repurchase program to renew that investor confidence, and looks like it's kind of worked with the stock regaining most of what it lost in January. Still, on this one, cash flow growth and sales have been stagnant, with both down over the last year and expected weak again this year. 
That said, the company has managed to pay a billion dollars in dividends and repurchase nearly 2.7 billion in shares over the last year. This is only a 3.2% dividend, so there are other options that we'll look at in the full list of dividend kings at the end of this video, but I do like that agricultural industry for the long-term stability, and ADM has been increasing its dividend for 50 straight years. In fact, it's got one of the strongest dividend growths on the list at 7.4% a year over the last five. You know we love talking stocks here on the channel, and I want to make it easy for you to track your portfolio. For that, I'm relaunching our custom portfolio tracker with a 33% discount only with the link below in the description. Now, this is so much more than just a stock portfolio tracker where you put in your stocks and how much you paid though. It's going to tell you the sector, the industry, and the return on each stock. It's even going to show you how much of your portfolio you have in each stock. You can also put in two stocks to compare them side by side against sector averages and 10 critical measures for stock analysis. This spreadsheet downloads all this data directly from the internet, so you're going to get up-to-date information anytime you use it. Here in the Investing Goals tab, you can put in your age, years until you want to retire, and how much you invest each month. This spreadsheet is going to use your current portfolio, past returns, and how much you invest to estimate exactly how much you'll have when retirement comes around. It'll also help you find out how much you need to live well. This is a complete stock portfolio and financial goals spreadsheet, and again, I'm relaunching it with a 33% discount. You're going to get lifetime access to any updates, videos on how to use it, and how to reach your goals. I'll leave a link below in the description to that special relaunch discount, so check that out. Kimberly Clark, ticker KMB and its 3.8% dividend is one you might not be familiar with, but I bet you know its brands. The company is first or second in market share in most of its regions and segments, and owns billion dollar brands in five industries, a household products powerhouse. Cash flow did fall after the pandemic, increasing those leverage metrics, so the company focused on paying down that debt over the past few years. That has slowed down the dividend growth to just 3.5% increase a year, but could reaccelerate over the next few years, and the company has been increasing its payout for 51 consecutive years. Next year, Northwest Natural Holdings, ticker NWN, made our recent dividend aristocrats list with its 5.5% yield, even though it was the lowest dividend in that group. Northwest has over 165 years as a regulated utility, serving more than 2 million customers in Oregon and Washington through natural gas, renewables, and water. And I love the business model here because it's got that regulated monopoly for the safe cash flows, plus the upside to incremental earnings on renewables and that gas pipeline asset. That regulated monopoly market means that Northwest has been able to increase its dividend for 68 straight years, growing the payout by 2.7% over the past five years. We've still got three more dividend stocks to highlight, including one with a 9% yield, but you're going to notice when I reveal that entire Dividend Kings list at the end of this video that I'm not just picking out the highest yielding stocks. I went through this list consciously targeting stocks from different sectors. That's how you make that bulletproof portfolio not just on stocks with 50 plus years of dividend payments, but by making sure that when some big macroeconomic force or trend does come along hitting a specific sector, that you've got stocks across at least five or six of the 11 stock sectors and your overall portfolio isn't gonna crash. And you can take this a step further and diversify across industries within each sector as well. But first, I just want you to make a conscious plan to have stocks from different sectors. Then if you notice that you've got a lot of stocks within a particular sector that, that you can make sure they aren't all in that same industry within it. And I know more than a few of you are out there saying, but Warren Buffett has half his portfolio in Apple alone and says diversification is only for people that don't know what they're doing. Okay, and Buffett also has a team of stock analysts and all day to follow his stocks. Plus that beat the market mentality isn't what, really what we're going for here. If you want a portfolio that's going to continue to spin off that cash flow and that you will never have to worry about, that bulletproof portfolio, then this is how you do it, by, by making sure that you have the stock spread across sectors that no one single event can crush your cash flow. AbbVie, ticker ABBV, is my favorite drug maker with its 3.4% yield and dividend king status. The company is a best-in-class pharmaceutical with a strong pipeline across every phase of trials, which is going to keep that revenue growing. Skyritzi and Renvoke both continue their blockbuster growth, expected to reach $27 billion in global sales by 2027 from just $16 billion this year, 
and the company recently raised its guidance on other indications as well. Not only has AbbVie increased its dividend for 52 consecutive years, but the growth of 6.7% a year is one of the highest on our list and is gonna help you grow your portfolio. Next here, we are past the spinoff of 3M's healthcare business, but it could still be a catalyst for the ticker MMM and its 6.5% dividend. I've been following shares of 3M since October, now up 24% as the stock took off ahead of that spinoff of the shares. While you won't get those new shares of Solventum for with 3M now, the, the spinoff still leaves the parent company easier to manage and more focused. That could translate to better profitability and returns for the stock. And then while you wait for those efficiency returns, you're gonna collect that nearly 7% dividend yield that's been increased for 64 straight years, making it one of the longest on the Kings list. Now, our last dividend stock before I reveal that full list of 54 dividend Kings is, yep, Altria Group, ticker MO, with its 9% yield. Nation, I know Altria makes nearly every dividend list I do, and I know you're tired of hearing about it as much as I'm tired of highlighting it, but that 9% dividend and the 22% dividend growth over the last five years it's very hard to ignore. Top it off with 54 straight years of dividend increases and yeah. Altria has managed to transition into smokeless tobacco and other products to offset that slow volume growth in cigarettes to, to produce that steadily rising cash flows and returns. Here's your full list of 54 dividend kings. I've noted the number of years dividend increases, the sector and dividend yield. And what I wanna focus on here isn't that yield, but the sector. I targeted some of the highest yielding dividend kings for our seven stock portfolio, but more importantly here, again, if you want that bulletproof portfolio, is to make sure you have stocks across different sectors so that if any of those big macro events happen to weigh on a particular sector of the economy, you're not caught with all your stocks in that one sector. Now you are obviously limited to the sectors here because only five of the 11 stock sectors are really represented. At the tech sector and most of the stocks in communication services weren't even around 50 years ago and they sure as hell weren't paying dividends. In stock lists like the Kings and even the dividend aristocrats, you're gonna find only those mature sectors and industries that have seen the days of fast revenue growth behind them. Companies in these sectors and industries have stable and consistent cash flow and fewer investment opportunities, so they're paying out more of those earnings as dividends. First up here in the consumer goods sector, we do have two high yield stocks with Altria and Universal, ticker UVV, but they're both in the tobacco industry. So if you don't like those, you might go with maybe Kimberly Clark or Kinvu, that new spinoff from Johnson & Johnson. And we don't have much of a choice here in the energy sector, but lots of other good energy stocks that pay dividends. So I might actually go with Devon Energy, ticker DVN, which is a longtime favorite here on the channel and pays a nearly 5% dividend yield. It's not on the Dividend Kings list, but still a stable and consistent payer. The financials here I do worry about right now with the office real estate crisis and the amount of office loans held by regional banks, but there are some good dividend stocks here. It's just that the yields kinda suck. And United Bank Shares is the only one I'd even consider a good dividend payer for its 4% dividend yield. Healthcare gives us both J&J &J and AbbVie. I've liked AbbVie for a long time here, but it just barely makes that dividend yield cutoff. I'd consider Johnson & Johnson as well after its spinoff here, hoping that it can be a catalyst to better run company and maybe stronger growth. Industrial sector is where you see the most representation on the Dividend Kings list. Of course, it's all those old school companies that were the growth companies 100 years ago that are now the market equivalent of oatmeal for breakfast. Good for you, but not that exciting. You won't get much growth here, but you will get that strong, consistent dividend in names like 3M and ADM. Again, not much choice here in the materials or real estate sector stocks, so I would look elsewhere for stocks in those sectors like WP Carry, ticker WPC, one of my favorite real estate investment trusts with its 6% dividend yield, or FMC Corporation, a materials company in the agricultural inputs industry with a 3.7% dividend. That leaves utilities, which is another big representation sector in the Dividend Kings list. Wall Street is just realizing the boom in electricity demand from those data centers tied to AI and crypto operations, so I'd be watching in any electrical generation utility, especially nuclear, and any with spare capacity to sell for those strong returns over the next few years. Get that special relaunch discount on our portfolio tracker spreadsheet, 33% off, and a great tool to follow your stocks, or click on the video to the right to see how to grow your dividend portfolio to $1,000 a month. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.